Welcome to Delhi Township Board of Trustees meeting for June 10th, 2015. Tonight's moment of silence will go to Melody Anderson, the mother of Dave Anderson, who's done a lot for Delhi. Unfortunately, Melody lost her life too early, so we'll take a moment of silence for her and then the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll start from with motions for consideration. Mr. Luby. Motion 2015-095. Approve the minutes of the regular Board of Trustee meeting held on May 27, 2015, and dispense with the reading. I move motion 2015-095 to approve the minutes from May 27th. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Motion 2015-096, approve bills for payment. I move motion 2015-096 to approve the bills for payment. Second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Motion 2015-097, approve the payment of overtime for pay period ending May 26, 2015. I have a motion 2015-097 to approve the payment of overtime. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Motion 2015-098, accept the voluntary resignation of Harold R. Compton, full-time facilities and property foreman, effective June 9, 2015. I have a motion 2015-098 to accept the voluntary resignation of Harold Compton. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Motion 2015-099, accept the voluntary resignation of Sarah E. Ackerman, part-time gardener, effective June 19, 2015. I move motion 2015-099 to accept the voluntary resignation of Sarah Ackerman. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move to presentations. We have two presentations tonight. The first one will be Pete Pritchard from the Delhi Township Bicentennial Committee. First off, good evening to all of you. I'm, uh, I'm here this evening to talk about a very important event. Am I too close here? Anyway, uh, most people don't even realize, but uh, Delhi Township turns 200 years old next year, as you guys well know. Um, a little history on that, just real quick. A petition was presented to the Ohio legislator on August 16th, 1816, asking that we might be incorporated and set from Green Township so on December 27th of that year, 1816, the act of incorporation was set down to the House of Representatives and therefore Delhi was born. What little do all of us know that Delhi was originally spelt D-E-L-H-I-G-H. -H. I never knew that and I'm a history guy. I don't know if any of you guys knew that or not. So we gotta find someone to figure out why the G-H was dropped. <laughs> but anyway, so with that said, um, uh, we have been organized as a steering committee, and uh, I'd like to almost uh, introduce the people that are serving on the steering committee for our bicentennial next year. Um, with me here this evening is Steve Shankle, representing the Riverview Delhi Kiwanis. Uh, we have Peg Schmidt, who's not here with us this evening, obviously with the Delhi Historical Society. Uh, Mary Brigham, uh, representing the uh, Mount St. Joseph University. And of course, um, Jack Ryan as well. Jack uh, is our emeritus advisor. And what's interesting is Jack, and uh, Peg both served on the 160th anniversary of Delhi in 1976, which you guys would remember being our nation's birthday. Uh, so their uh, assistance is really invaluable. So they're really kind of helping us kind of move along and what things we want to work on. Um, we would like to actually kick off the celebration, believe it or not, at this year's Christmas parade. So we're talking about a lot of different plans even for that, possibly even putting a float together and so on, but we will uh, get back with you. That's a, but that's kind of the kickoff for the uh, celebration for all next year. We basically want to have a year-long celebration of Delhi. And uh, just some of the things that uh, and, uh, I'll share here is you can see here on the screen is our new logo. Um, this was uh, actually put together by a township resident that many people know, and that's um, uh, Tricia Johnson and it's sponsored by Mount St. Joe University. So that is, uh, if you look some of the components of that, it is obviously the Delhi Historical uh, Farmhouse and some of the flowers that we're obviously known for here in Delhi Township. So we're gonna uh, go with that logo. 
So we're real uh, proud of that. So, but uh, the other thing that we're uh, the historical society is also going to update the history of Delhi book. Again, that was done in 1976, so we're talking 40 years, and a lot has changed. And we're actually, when I ask a lot of the businesses and organizations that have that are still here from 1976 to maybe provide a little update on themselves, including us with the Delhi Township Fire Department. So I know uh, Chief Campbell will get started on that tomorrow, I'm sure, giving an update on our department. Alrighty then. But anyway, um, <laughs> We want to work on little small things that they did back in 76, a fishing tournament possibly at, uh, over at uh, Clearview Lake. Uh, we want to do a Delhi Day at Great American Ballpark. I'd like to do maybe a Delhi Day at Coney Island. So um, the Civic Association is working on a Delhi cookbook and uh, they will be reaching out shortly to our residents and businesses for any recipes. So for anyone that's interested, they can uh, make contact with us. Um, I know with the university is uh, organizing a 5K run, believe it or not, uh, next year uh, with a Delhi Day being held at one of the home games up there at the university. So they're working on that as well. They're going to do an open house at the university and also over at the Mother House complex as well. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, and our big event that we're uh, I'm actually really happy about, it, things are kind of fall into place right now, we want to do a Taste of Delhi Day. And we want that to occur on the Saturday after the skirt game. Uh, as you guys well know, a lot of larger events do three-day events, like hence the uh, Taste of Cincinnati, which was just a couple weeks ago, our local Harvest Home Fair, usually a three-day event. So we were hoping to kind of coattail off of them uh, with the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, tailgate party for Thursday and, of course, the uh, actual skirt game. So on Saturday, we'll have maybe a number of bands, and there's a lot of plans for that, and we'll uh, expand on that as things come around. So, But we are indeed going to save that date at Delhi Park for that Saturday, the day after the skirt game. So real excited about that. And, of course, this will all be capped off with our capstone event to be held on uh, Saturday, uh, which is, I do believe, is December the 4th, I think, of 2016, and the public is invited to that. So we're real excited about that as well. And the uh, Delhi Historical Society is actually going to head that project up. So we're real uh, excited about that as well. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is that we do have a Facebook page. And we are indeed looking for people to uh, visit that and obviously like us. Uh, it is uh, Delhi 1816, or basically the um, Delhi Township Bicentennial Celebration. If you key that in, you'll come up on our Facebook page. And uh, we will keep that updated as things go along. So. Um, uh, with that said, uh, we are looking for individuals and for groups to uh, get involved in this. And if uh, anyone would like to uh, get in contact with us, they can either reach me at the Delhi Fire Department or indeed my website, cpeat.com. Real easy, cpeat.com. Um, we are having a general meeting this upcoming Monday, June 15th, 3 o'clock at the Lodge, and all are invited. So uh, you guys have any questions or uh, comments? I'd just like to say thank you, Pete, for your work on this, as well as Steve Shank. Well, I see you sitting there, but everyone who's volunteered and attended these meetings, this is a this is truly a, a labor of love that's going to take an entire year to get it together. So if you have the time and the interest that you could maybe volunteer and help these guys, I'm sure they would really appreciate it. You got some great news from the Delhi Business Association this morning yes. with them doing the uh, Taste of Delhi. So it's. Um, it's a, a big project for next year, and it's a big reason to celebrate. And we do thank you very much for the, your time and your efforts to get this done. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And like I said, we'll keep the board uh, up to date, you know, date as things come along. So thanks for letting us uh, come. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Start with you. All right. Next presentation we have is a strategic redevelopment plan with Santec, but we're going to start with Administrator Landrum. I just uh, thank you just to set this up. Uh, we uh, had a busy, uh, have had a busy week this week. Uh, yesterday we started at the lodge uh, last night with a presentation from six to eight. Um, the attendance was significantly down. Um, I did see some Facebook posts that people said, we're still following it. We were unable to come, but keep posting everything to Facebook. We're watching. So very important. Um, so we will be, uh, of course, videotaping this and getting this out. Uh, today we spent a lot of time uh, in a planning process of listening, after listening to everybody, of actually starting to put pieces of the puzzle uh, to see what fits, what's possible. 
Um, Steve uh, Kearney is uh, with Stan Tech. He is going to uh, tonight bring uh, the board and bring uh, the public and citizens all up to date from the beginning to where we got some significant things we were waiting on. Uh, we still have to go through a lot of data, uh, but there are you know part of this piece is not just fancy drawings but it's doing the research behind how, how much residential can it support how much what's the market uh doing uh what can the market rate support for businesses uh so those pieces have initially been drafted and and uh, we're going to be diving into deeper numbers uh it, i will say this uh we are very happy with what we're seeing uh, we're not expecting to see things other communities that have interstates run through them no but we we were surprised pleasantly with what we're seeing and it gives us the uh, opportunity to uh, to move ahead in a very positive manner that what we thought what we were thinking the numbers are showing that it is possible so very good news right off the bat uh, so with, uh, with we do I just want to state we got this for people to watch but also we'll be putting everything on our website and as much as we can on Facebook as well tomorrow night and I just want to remind everybody tomorrow night we will be having an open house it is a change of venue it is at uh, the senior center so at the senior center we will be having a shorter presentation and an open house that actually reflects all the input that we have received and the, and the statistics that we have received and the showing you more of 3d modeling you'll see a little bit tonight of some of it but starting to put the pieces and getting the public reaction to it and more suggestions where possible we also had the oversight committee meeting today uh, getting them further engaged and it was very pleasant that we just sent them I mean I don't know 20 50 pages on one of them was a, a one of the uh, pieces of uh, things that we sent them and some of them had read every bit of it and had highlights done and we were like wow are you kidding uh, so they're very engaged so we're very pleased with that uh, so just keep us in mind tomorrow night six o'clock senior center other than that I'm going to turn this over to Steve and uh, we'll go through a presentation here. Great. Thank you very much, Pete. That was a perfect introduction. As I said last night, and I'll say again tonight, this is a highly moving part of the planning process. We are quickly working with the material that's coming in, and we're using that to base the decisions that you'll begin to see tonight and that the community is seeing over the course of this week. And again, I'll explain it throughout this presentation, and I thank everyone for their patience of seeing some of this again, who have again been part of this from the beginning and are coming to all of the meetings. So that, that to us is exciting. It means the community really supports it. So next slide. You know, really what I want to work through tonight is the you know the project update you know let everyone know where we're at in the process the vision statement and guiding principles which I'll explain are built on what we learned from the community in April and it is a synthesis of the community's individual visions we'll go, walk through those they I will dive into the residential market analysis because I think that's important to understand it's a strong component of what can drive some of the revitalization efforts and I think it's important to understand each of those pieces and then we'll start to walk into really the 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 place making which is what we're speaking about t today and this week and developing the the main street the, the the walkable environment the 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 downtown if you will of delhi township the place that it was and how we can bring it back into and that's that's the push we're on right now the herb the design really the design part of this process but based on the market analysis and you know again i'll just end with a quick review of what to expect tomorrow night although pete has already just covered some of that so we are good next slide you're really just looking at where we're at in the process click once you know we we are you know we just started in april it is now you know early june but what's important is much of the analysis the existing conditions work is behind us we have all the draft materials we got great input from the oversight committee today uh, we will be finalizing those but importantly if you note the plan development task four and soon to be task five not far away about a month away this is the real work that we will be pulling together the plan product plan development we will take the analysis and turn it into a conceptual master plan with specific projects we will test those and I'll get into some of that information as we go into these slides next 
Uh, yeah, we have already um, been involved with the community, two major events. This is the biggest, uh, the kickoff with 145 plus. Um, 20, we haven't hit the 25 stakeholder interviews, but we're getting there and we'll continue throughout this. Um, we're holding them by phone and in person. We say to every time we're speaking to individuals, if you know other stakeholders you think we should be reaching out to, let us know. A big part of this process is to identify entities, individuals who can be part of the implementation process and that's critical to a successful planning effort. Uh, we will come back with the development scenarios as we move from a framework. We'll come into specific conceptual redevelopments that will be costed out to prove developer uh, feasibility and which will attract developers, which is what we're, our goal is to attain with this project. And that will be presented in August and will again be a community event. And then we come back in September really with a draft plan that will hopefully be adopted officially in October. So this is a seven month process as we've explained and seven months goes very fast in the planning world. So next slide. Uh, again, just looking at who we've already met with, uh, it, it's been great. I mean, the input has been huge. It is helping us understand what's happening. When you read the market memo from WZHA, uh, much of the information comes from the experts within the community and then it's tested through national data and frankly, WZHA's uh, expertise on this and it is, it, it's strong and been very helpful. So, I mean, this is truly from the community itself to the stakeholders is being built together. The you know goals for next month, I just wanted to keep this in here just because to give a sense, this was actually for the oversight committee to help them understand that they'll be busy as well. But it's a just so we know, you know, we will be and expectations of where we'll be at, you know, we will finish these draft reports that everyone will be reviewing right now. They will get up onto the website soon. We want to take this rough and tumble sketchy, messy development framework we're working on right now and really refine it into what's realistic and works within the existing conditions, the street network, et cetera, the property owners. You know, we want to get quickly into these catalytic developments. This is a component of our scope where we will develop these and we will, you know, create pro formas, you know, operating pro formas to prove viability. That all starts within the next June and July. And really an outline for the plan document uh, for the direct team to review and probably an example part of the plan itself. Again, just to move this forward. Um, just quickly, this was presented last night, the strengths and the challenges. I, this was directly from the community. And it's just important to note, you know, without a doubt, I, I mean, it is, I don't have to read the list. You know, Delhi Park, you know, the fact that this is such a family friendly community, the, the values, these are all so critical. Every single person, every table came up with these and these are the combined strengths from the community and it's just it is great i mean the commitment to local success kroger I, it sounds silly to list a grocery store as a strength but to us i mean having a grocery store like kroger of that quality and the investment being put into it it's indicative of a strong market and to us that means with a strong market we can make things happen so it's great that the community is saying this as well mount st joe's of course just to quickly hit the other side of this, um, this isn't even the entire list of challenges. So, you know, this is why we do a community effort. We have to bring this out. We have to acknowledge what the issues are. And again, strip centers, lack of identity, not age friendly. These are issues that we're hearing from the community and all get incorporated into the plan process. The, you know, th there are some, you know, concerns. I think um, on the one hand, we heard some safety concerns. On the other hand, I'm proud to say nearly universally within the commercial area where everyone traditionally goes, shops, considers a shared space, safety was not an issue for, with anyone we spoke to. That speaks volumes to what we've got here. So again, we see the challenges, we have to address the challenges, but they are, they can be addressed and the strengths really are going to help pull this through. Next. Draft vision statement. I will read this because we're on the record and this is important. I want the community and everyone watching this uh, to hear this, especially if they can't see. So I will. You know, Delhi Pike is thriving and is again the center of township life. Like Delhi itself, the Pike is safe and welcoming to all. It represents the culmination of longstanding community goals for a great array of choices for shopping, dining, and entertainment places for families of all ages to gather, better connections by car, foot, bike, and transit, 
expanded housing options that serve young and old, improved parks and public spaces, increased employment opportunities, and opportunities to walk within a Main Street environment to meet friends. The Pike has emerged as a uniquely 21st century village center, a source of pride for our community, and one of the reasons why new and returning residents come home to Delhi Township. Now let me repeat, this is a a synthesis of over 130 vision statements from the community. Um, commonalities that you see in that are, in fact, you know, the idea of stressing that you know the importance of family to Delhi Township, the idea that residents, children grow up, come home, and that's something that was both a source of pride and a source of concern that we heard from the community. So those are how and why we create this vision statement, and. It, we tweak it a little bit to cover some of the other overarching goals. So this is something, it's a draft. We welcome more input. This is not complete until we have given the community a chance to really weigh in on this. So this could likely change. We always like to have core principles to a planning effort because when a developer comes in and proposes a project, we want to have, we want to make sure that that development hits the principles of this plan effort. So again, I'll, and I'll walk it through from that perspective on the, the five principles that we have. Support community. So again, how is a pro development project going to support the community? How is it going to add to a sense of place? How is it going to possibly create an environment, a public environment, that again will attract community, will provide a place for the community to be? What are the qualities of that development that support community? Next. Build economic value. This has a multitude of different objectives and we'll get to them. But you know, essentially, you know, Delhi Pike was the place that was where people went and shopped. It created the tax revenue. How can that come back? How is your project going to help increase the economic value within this area? How is your development possibly going to create spaces for entrepreneurs? You know, spaces where individuals can work within here. How is that going to help? How is your development going to create jobs that residents who would have access to. But those are, you know, how can we enhance economic value? Next slide. Quality of life. This is, you know, quality of life we talk about in different plans, but in the, in the terms of what we heard and learned from the community and the stakeholders is, you know, we, we've got, you know, still a fairly strong commercial area, but there are vacancies here. It doesn't have the level that it once had. But we also heard across the board from our stakeholders in the community that there are some safety concerns in different parts of the pike and within the surrounding area. And, and if you look at the income de demographics, you know, in Parts of this, they are actually very strong. You were going to see in a few minutes on the market. But if you are to slice or look at certain sections within our study area, they are not as strong. And again, there are health issues. There are concerns related to drug use that are issues that we're learning about that we will address within this plan. And so as much as this may be about creating a place that we can all share, it's also about coming up with some strategies, health and wellness related, creating better access to health that could be a real benefit to the community. So again, this is a quality of life. This could relate to a type of development such as medical use development within here. And again, immediately addressing this principle. Next. Connectivity. If we've heard it once, we've heard it twice. It's not the only place we want to connect to, but the Mount and St. Joseph's University and how the students want to be here and how can we make it easier for them to get here to create part of the vibrancy that will make this you know, truly a shared space. So how do we connect to the Mount? How do we connect to the surrounding neighborhoods? There's sidewalk issues. There's other ways. We learned, this is, we learned throughout this, that in some situations, you know, we think it's easy to get to and we hear that there's major barriers, be it a creek, be it a lack of sidewalks. So we need to understand how we can actually you know, connect the, the residents to this area that we're working on. Next. Finally, every plan, again, we, we want to include something about sustainability, but we're serious about that. And what do we mean and how are we really addressing it? How is a development project going to address sustainability? How is it going to improve stormwater issues? How is it going to enhance the ecosystem or the environment around? How is a development going to impact uh, Cincinnati uh, surrounding neighborhoods? All of those are issues that I think we can address and we want to get into those. And again, as a principle for this, how are new projects going to address this issue? Next. So again, we're now going in, you know, we've done all the existing conditions. I want to move fairly quickly into the residential market analysis, but, you know, next slide. You know, it's important, you know, we have the demographic push. This was a 
larger part of the presentation last night. It was a part of the kickoff. And I welcome everyone to, to re go back and look at these presentations. You know, we often discuss, it's an exciting opportunity that's happening right now. There are demographic changes within the country in areas like Delhi with a media adjacency to emerging jobs in Cincinnati can benefit and types of development are occurring that haven't occurred in 15, 20 years, probably longer in some ways. But so there are new opportunities. And you know, just looking at this slide, you know, you know, what we are seeing and what we believe in is being proven true with the market work, you know, with the demographic shifts, you know, there are probably new housing market opportunities that we can look at, and those housing market opportunities create the mixed use opportunities, the commercial, the increased number of households within a smaller area where you can walk to create new types of housing choices, and, and I'm sorry, new types of retail choices that will begin to fill the spaces that we're working with when we're talking about mixed use. And again, it's being pushed by this demographic shift, but the benefits come out on the commercial side as well. Next slide. <clears throat> Just a couple, you know, again, looking, pulling back out a bit. America is, in fact, growing, and, you know, part of that growth is creating a much more diverse country, and we always, you know, believe in and focus on the fact that more diverse uh, settings, more diverse places are actually more attractive to everyone, and it, it's something that we often talk about, and diversity to us is everything. It is, um, it's, it's not just race, it's different ages. It is different socioeconomic groups. It's, it's, it's the wide span because, again, those are the places that become more exciting and ultimately more attractive uh, places to be and to have fun, to play, to live, to work. Next slide. And again, you know, this uh, we always, you know, talk about, but it, it is true. And, you know, this is, you know, this is to show you very simply how much, you know, demographics have shifted in our country. You know, when you talk about where growth came from, it, you know, over the last 20 years, it has been primarily in the 35 to 64-year-olds. Uh, this is n this is national. This is not Delhi. This is everywhere in our country. And go to the next, and, and then you hit one more time, and it'll be a fancy graphic. It switches. And again, 65 and older is by far and above the fastest growing demographic in our country. Um, this is the baby boomers, and they are, it's reshaping choices. And to us, again, that creates the opportunity. That's what we're looking at. Next slide. And it is creating the opportunity for new types of growth. Um, without you know, repeating, it means that you know, different choices, the, the market rate, the high quality rental becomes a new option that both empty nesters and also millennials because of the recession, because of the difficulty in getting mortgages, you know, th these changes are relating to new market, new housing types coming up. The market in and of itself, I think anyone who drives around is seeing it in these new developments it's being driven solely by the market, and that's something we want to capture. That's a, a, a specific goal of this planning effort. Next slide. And again, you know, the fact is just, you know, the, the growth opportunities right now that we're looking at are within the, the, multi, the high quality multifamily rental, you know, probably not within the sprawl. And as David Dixon more eloquently said last night, if you look at this, you know, model here, and it, it's really looking in other areas, that the growth opportunities are likely in closer in neighborhoods with opportunities to have the density. The, I mean, the residential lots here are smaller. You have more people. You have 60,000 people who are considered the market for our location. That's much larger than we anticipated. It's because of how Delhi traditionally grew, and it's part of the opportunity that we can build on. And that, to us, is exciting. Sprawl, two-plus, you know, five-acre, four-acre properties are not creating the, the market necessarily. And it, it's, a, it's a different place. It's probably not the opportunity as much of an opportunity right now as what we're looking at. So good news for Delhi. Next slide. So again, you know, what have we looked at that, the demographics, you know, that brings us into the market studies, which we've been mentioning, we got this week, we're building on. Next slide. Residential, we hire, we work with um, Zimmerman Voke Associates as often as we can because they're her, Lori Voke, who leads it, you know, her reports are, are brought to the bank by developers. And, and we say that in the sense that when we talk about the tools we ultimately end up with and deliver to the township, the 
market, residential market report is a tool that developers can take to get financing to build support for their case. It's something that the township holds and shares with, it, with anybody who comes in the door who's interested in. And, and again, developers who are here and listening, you know, as soon as this is revised over the next couple of weeks, there will be a final version out and I would highly recommend anyone um, to pick this up and to look at it. It's important. But you know, it, different is it doesn't look at the existing residential conditions. It looks at mobility rates and who the future renter, homeowner may be. And it's done through IRS data and other different types of data and their own methodology to come up with if you are building this, this is the amount of market you can capture realistically within a five year time frame. Next slide. And you know what we ask these questions because these are very helpful for us and this is how Lori goes through her report and I just wanted to highlight a few pieces of it. You know what type of home are they looking for? This is a you know, you know we we're talking about the top t you know really the top multifamily for rent, multifamily for sale, single family attached for sale because again when you look at our study area that is, that's what fits within our study area. We have single family residential in our study area and that, that's already there. And so the, the properties that we'd be looking at, we're looking at the top three. The, you know, with that said, we're still, this report looks at the market and, you, and obviously you still have a strong single family market out there. I uh, just wanted to make sure that was mentioned last night. Next slide. But where are they coming from? And again, this I just find is very interesting. It's typically strong from the, the local area, but you are, you're very strong from the area. You know, base, essentially Hamilton County and Delhi is you know, 80%, more, 80, more than 80% of the, the draw here. So when everyone says Delhi residents come home, they do. And in fact, I even question the balance of the US, which is your true national draw of that near 10%, I wonder how many grew up here. It would be interesting if you could actually figure that out. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. But the fact is, you are attracting from across. What's interesting for us is typically when we're, now we're looking more into what can we build and we're focused more on the multifamily and the townhomes. This usually is split more equally between empty nesters, retirees, and the younger singles and couples. And you know, younger singles and couples are going to drive the market here. And it's, it's helpful, it's good. It's more, it, it, it can really, you know, we can, now that we understand it, we can think about the retail options, et cetera. With that said, I mean, this is, you still have empty nesters, retirees, and you still have traditional and non-traditional families will be a part. But, you know, this is how we begin to understand who is coming. Next slide. Another interesting piece, and just Pete click once, the, when we're looking at how much they can afford to pay for rent, this is, this number, we have not gotten into the next step, but the fact that you know sixty percent can pay up to you know twelve fifty seven hundred fifty to twelve fifty, those likely at the thousand to twelve fifty, and even the you know eight nine hundred, you know, with that amount that begins to probably demonstrate that development can occur and will occur. And it's a, we have to prove that a developer will get roughly, let's say, a 6% return on investment. And to do that, and considering the prices of some of these properties, they have to charge a certain level of rent. Now, you know, we know that rents in the lower part of our study area are, are as low as 400, you know, and $500 a month. You know, this is an entirely different, likely, product. I mean, a real brand new, high-end market rate housing. And the fact is, we've, we've got a, a strong part of the market that can pay these rents. And that, that's a very important fact to this. That will, you'll want to look at that and then see the additional work on how the pricing works out on some of the development scenarios. Next slide. So again, what this, what this means in the next five years, 350 units of housing. Um, if you look out over 10 years, which in a development standpoint, and a revitalization of this effort, it is likely a 10-year effort. You're basically at 600. And again, we, we're estimating more when we get to the 10-year real estate. It's hard to see that far. But with that said, what's interesting is in the actual study area, you actually you have about 600 units of housing right now. So just as a way to think about it, 
the you know within five years you could you know, build more than half of what's there already, and possibly within ten years you're building up in, in, in a different models um, to support the single family. You know, you're 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 really increasing the density, and you're creating the opportunity for retail to thrive again within this area. And that that's this is what we're trying to get to. That's the that's the goal of this planning. Next slide. For fun, I wanted to look. Uh, this I added today because somebody, a woman from the meeting last night, asked me, "Who are these young people?" I don't really see. I don't know who they are. Why aren't they? Why aren't the young people just moving to Cincinnati to over the Rhine? And so I went into the report, and this is one snippet of it. But I wanted to pull out uh, the very to show you how clearly we slice and dice the psychographics of the person who would be interested in living within this area and. You've got some entrepreneurs and E-types and VIPs and fast-track professionals, and I should say that in the appendices to these reports, we have a very clear description of who those individuals are. But you, you, you know, you're hitting upscale suburban couples. You're hitting, you know, roughly suburban achievers as some of the large demographics, along with the urban achievers. You know, there are a lot of people who will choose not to live in a downtown setting. They don't like the lack of access to a grocery store, to some of the other amenities that they grew up with. And so when somebody says, who are they, you know, th this is the kind of report that we're we created. We can tell you exactly who they are and, and who we want to design for and build for. And that's what we're trying to do. Next slide. And again, what just came out is the market summary um, that I encourage everyone to read, and we'll get more. We'll pull more of this in the presentation. But the fact is, you know, we're looking at the opportunity for 60,000 square feet of medical use. We are talking about the fact that because of the traffic going to Kroger, we can support smaller stores, shoe stores. Um, there will be smaller coffee shops, exactly the type of retail we'd be looking for, and I would say exactly the type of retail that we heard from the very first event where, you know, there are no dry cleaners here, there's no florist here, there's no butcher here. The, you know, we actually think in our, you know, the retail, the strength of the market, and if we can do it the right way, we actually have the opportunity to get that. And that's what, again, more exciting information, I encourage everyone to read the WZHA summary. Next. We, last night we showed just some examples, you know, what can this begin to look like? Um, and we can go quickly because I want to get into what we're starting to think more realistically. What important thing is we are talking about different scale and different opportunities. Uh, this I just want to pause because we always show modern traditional. We like to get a sense, take a temperature of the community and this one. So for everyone watching, the, the traditional, I think this is a great development. It shows a type of you know material and quality that you know truly appealed and tradition and I, I just think you know it's great and this is an environment this is a street be it a block or two blocks that you would truly enjoy walking down and that's if we can get one image we're thinking something like this next slide and do go through you know we, we will design for all townhouses next slide so what we are doing now, again, we've gone into the existing conditions. We're going to zip through these slides to get to our work from yesterday and today. But what we are charged with, we know what we can get to. So now we have to identify the right sites. And this is what's going to happen over the next five and then likely to 10 years. And we have to, and we'll work very hard with everyone, with Pete, with Catherine, with Tom, and everyone who's helping us, the Oversight Committee, to really make sure we're hitting the right properties. You know, and it's really, you know, Sarah Woodworth will help us figure out, you know, how will the value shape the strategies? Some of these properties are expensive. Adjacent to Kroger is an expensive property. We need to figure out if we, if our rents can support that type of development. And I just want to state right now, one big thing we'll be doing, and we'll be doing it next week, is now that we're working on our conceptual development ideas and scenarios, and there'll be multiple ones, it requires us to call all of these property owners. And again, our goal here is to understand how we can create the environment that we're charged with, and at the same time, you know, create an environment that ultimately increases the value of these properties. It's increasing the level of use and ultimately the value. And so that'll be our charge, our conversation, and we'll work with, to get the names of all the property owners and who we should call, because I'd much rather tell them that that's what we're trying to do, as opposed to them seeing an image in a paper of what we've drawn and come to a different conclusion. So but again, we, you know, that's, this is on the other side of this, you know, we're getting excited. We've seen areas that we think make sense. Next slide. We've done that by going through a very careful analysis of all of the different conditions, land use, 
large holdings, clearly, if we're dealing with one property owner, there's probably a likelier chance of success. Property value, this is interesting. You know, some property values just are expensive. These orange colors and yellows are more expensive. That's going to impact some of our decisions. Next. And we, we lay it all on top of each other, and we try to figure out the best locations, and we've identified them, really. Next slide. And if I could walk up, I would, but I'm on the speaker here. Site A, with its proximity to Delhi Park, which was probably, again, the number one strength, you know, voted by the community, uh, and we agree, and probably not really utilized to the degree that it should be. It's hard to tell you right next to the park, and it's hard to tell you right next to the pike when you're in the park, uh, more so. And again, you know, with Kroger's right there driving so much traffic and being a true amenity to this community, uh, it, we just think that if there's a place to start, it's a place to start there. Site B is uh, the, the Remke. It's just it's a large site and may very well be the one where you start. One property owner that could be a huge opportunity. I'll I'll show you those as we go to the next slides. You know, Delphair Site C on first visit, second visit. You know, we would have said yes, 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 definitely the opportunity. You know, in our discussions and how this shapes up, and this is all you know up for changing and will change over the next you know few weeks. But if we are successful at site A, you know maybe Delphair is a little bit later, or maybe Delphair develops in its own way. And that you know again talking about potential ideas of graduate student housing as something uh, has come up in a conversation. Maybe there are different opportunities that really will change this. But right now we're beginning to look at site A. Site B, B2 as a potential expansion. You know, if in fact you know this occurs, notice you've got some residential within that. And much of that's owned by one individual. Again, this is some of the research we've done, which helps us you know look at it this way. Next slide. So this is you know A, and this is a start. This is a phase one right here, and and significant amount of development. Red is mixed use. Yellow is just plain housing. <coughs> Something to emphasize on this, and it, it's important because these are our challenges. This is Aaron, our designer in the back, has been working with David Dixon. And this, the purple is the parking, surface parking. Unless we get more positive numbers, which we could, I mean, they're, they're going in the right direction, but likely we want to look at surface parking all of this development. That is probably the scenario that we'll have. And we need to make sure we have enough. We need to understand how we, where, how and where we place the parking, that it works to create the environment. And also, and this is a conversation came up with the oversight committee, why we have an oversight committee, you know, how we do it in a way that also doesn't disturb the neighborhood, surrounding neighborhoods. So that's something we want to think about. Next slide. <coughs> now we're beginning to see the 3D model and how it might take shape. And to look at what we're beginning to understand, you know, on the north side of the pike, look at Remke and look at the south side and look at how it traditionally developed. And that is really, you know, to me and why we start to look at it this way, this is, you know, about changing in environment. When we say urban, what we're saying is some more traditional grid work, streets that you can walk along, as opposed to a suburban to the right, which is large scale parking lots. And again, so that's, that's us. But we pulled out to show where the park is and, and what we can really, you know, create here. Next slide. And here's, you know, likely a level of development that we're talking about here. You know, it is fairly modest, but at the same time, fairly ambitious. And it's three-story. We could likely go up to four-story. And, you know, here is now off the pike, you know, along this new per perpendicular street we were just looking at. Next slide. Now going back, another question, again, that came up with the community last night is, how are we going to cross Delhi Pike? This is not an easy road to cross, and it's not, and so we need to come up with these strategies, and, and we'll do so, and I caution you, this is a precedent slide. We did not draw it for this particular location, but I want to show you how, you know, these side roads might meet the pike. So look at, you know, now we need islands in the middle, some type of island. They are not going to be as big as these. But when you take five lanes of traffic and you create a safety zone in the middle, it's not hard for most everyone to get across two lanes of traffic with a, a red light. And you can make it. And, but, and again, we need to clearly demarcate that pedestrians will be crossing along the street. And this is, the, this is how much, that, in a way, that you really want to do that. 
and that is something that we will be discussing. These are part of the strategies. This is a county road, and, and we, we understand what we're talking about, but it's still important. That's how we have to really work forward on this. Next slide. And again, you know, internal street meets the park. So again, you know, even though you've got this amazing park, highly programmed, great, one, voted the greatest asset by the community, we're also thinking about internal, you know, gathering spaces, community spaces, as someone said, and we always like to say, a place where you put your Christmas tree, you know, your 40 foot tall Christmas tree, and, and a place where, you know, events can occur and the community can come together. So this will be an important part of it. It's also, as we keep saying, you know, we have to understand how those costs, how you support that type of development, because those are the amenities that attract the developers, that attract the residents, attract the community, and it's our job to figure out how you do so in a way that makes financial sense. Next slide. And again, you know, as I said in the beginning, maybe we don't get the north side of Delhi Pike to work. Let's take a look at the Remke site and, you know, one property owner and what could that possibly be? We anchored it with a multiplex. I would say it right now. You know, we'd have to understand if that's viable. That may not be. 60,000 strong, but that's, you know, they, they may have their own numbers. But an idea that we're working through right now. Next slide. And it's looking into this where you can flank it by residential, create, again, space for the community to come together. And at the end and behind it, you know, significant parking, and there's a grade change on this property too. So there actually is probably a fairly inexpensive way to tuck away some of the parking in, the, in a scenario like this or this property that could be attractive. If you can make grade work to your advantage, all the better. And that is a, you know, a highly viable development opportunity that takes up a, a good portion of the market that we are discovering is available here. And this will, will essentially end with some of the phasing, you know, building off you know, to the west along the pike. Next slide. And again, Delphair. And you know, we, it's easy to look here. You know, we're going after areas that we think we can really make an impact. If you can look at the, you know, between Delphair and Remke that we have not addressed, there's still probably real opportunities that we could pull this together. And you, some of those properties are fairly large. And if, the, if this is succeeding, if we are really hitting development and development's increasing and the environment has changed so much, that, that could likely be an area that would likely change. We'll have a, it's an example of a future land use map that we'll include with this plan. We will likely say, you know, this should be considered. It would increase value. Uh, but again, we always caution those are, you know, homes and businesses are something that we are, you know, we hold in high, high regard. And, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, this evolves with the community in mind, you know, with us developing this. And, you know, again, if, if the markets rise to the value that residents you know, benefit and make those decisions, that could be an opportunity and would likely be identified by us as a longer term, you know, opportunity. And, you know, that is where we are. Uh, I think next slide. Um, townhouse development, I think I would, we end on this. An example of, you know, the market shows about 30 to 40 townhouses in the next three to four years. That could be a perfect example of a type of development that is not mixed use uh, and a great way to connect to the single family residential neighborhoods. Uh, and again, going back to how do we design this so that it, the developers use this plan, that's an example of connectivity as a much as providing a different choice of housing for the community. So right just within that, it's hitting two goals that could be sustainable infrastructure underneath those sidewalks. Those are the tools that we'll be using. Tomorrow night, and this is, you know, we are, as I've said, we're, we're working, working, working. Nothing is finished. That, that, all I can say is we won't finish anything by tomorrow night. But what you will see if you come are a number of different scenarios with that three-dimensional model. And, and really, uh, you'll see the process we've gone through. And it's just another opportunity to come in, talk about the vision statement, let us know what you think. I'm already revising it on what we heard last night. If we hear more, we'll still revise it. But it's really just a way for the community to share, understand, see what we're doing, see how we've done it, see why we've done it, and then provide their input again on are we hitting it the right way or are there concerns that we want to still continue to address. And with that, I'll open it up to questions, but I've probably taken too long already. You're fine. <laughs> okay. No, I was there last night and this afternoon. I think I'm, 
I'm pretty well versed right now. Thank you, so. Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have trustee correspondence, trustee Seavey. Um, two things. First, I had the opportunity to be at the Oak Hills graduation Saturday night, so I want to send out a, an official congratulations to all 649 of them. It only took 45 minutes to bring them all in, and so um, from your alumni president, I say welcome <coughs> to the alumni, to the class of 2015. Also on Saturday night, one of our own residents, um, Ms. Jenny O'Connor received the top alumni award from Mount St. Joseph University. This award is called, let me get it right, Loretta Richards, who was actually the first graduate of the Mount. So this is quite an honor for our resident Jenny O'Connor and her husband Neil O'Connor also serves on our, our, boardings, our, our zoning board. So Really, congratulations, Jenny, and congratulations to all the graduates that took place. I know Elder and Seton also had their graduations as well. So welcome to the alumni status. Nothing for me tonight. We're going to move to report from fiscal officer. The 2016 tax budget hearing will be on Wednesday, June 24th, 2015 at 6 p.m. In, in, the, in the administration building. The budget is available for inspection at the administration building and has been posted to the township website at www.delhi.oh.us. And there will be no financial advisory board meeting for the month of June 2015. There are no public hearings tonight. There are no reports from departments tonight. So we'll move to reading of the resolutions. Mr. Luby. Resolution 2015-075. Resolution approving purchase order obligations incurred on behalf of the township by the township administrator authorizing payment of certain purchase order obligations and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce to move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswell? Yes. Mr. Seavey? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-076, resolution authorizing transfer from one appropriation item to another, pursuant to revised code 5705.40, and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce to move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Landrum? Uh, yes, this is a transfer of the fire fund of $200 uh, from uh, one line item to another I line item to the legal uh, counsel uh, fee labor uh, line item, uh, 200 bucks is just to cover uh, labor fees. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswell? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-077, resolution authorizing the purchase of certain equipment from the Whitewater Township Fire EMS Department. Authorizing the fire chief to execute the purchase agreement and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce to move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? No? Okay. Um, I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswell? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-078, resolution authorizing the placement of advertisement for bids for the Delhi Township Street Rehabilitation and Repair Project, number 2015-A, and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce some of the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswell? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-079, resolution waiving the burn permit fee in connection with the issuance of a permit to the St. Dominic Cub Scout Pack 483 for its flag retirement ceremony, authorizing the township administrator to issue the special exemption certificate and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? Um, Mr. Landrum, do you want to make the announcement for residents? <clears throat> uh, yes, we, we've been asked, you know, uh, we've had a couple couple of these. these this is the second one in the last uh, meeting. Uh, 
Boy Scout troops uh, such as us uh, do retirements of flags, you know, you know the, the, uh, our United States flag. And uh, they have, you know, sp- special instructions on how they do it and all that. Uh, so it was asked of us, well, how do we, you know, I have a flag, what do I do? So we uh, graciously, through our parks director, uh, Josh Torbeck, uh, we will accept uh, if somebody uh, needs a flag to be retired uh, through the ceremony uh, of one of the, we can't say which scout troops it will be or organization, but we'll uh, accept those at the parks office and uh, make sure it, uh, they get properly retired. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mr. Seavey? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-080, resolution authorizing the, the Director of Public Works to obtain necessary right of entry and temporary easement agreements from record property owners in connection with the maintenance of the Orange Lawn drainage easement and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. <clears throat> I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-081, resolution authorizing the township administrator to enter into the architect agreement with KZF Design related to the new Greenwell Avenue Fire Station project and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? This is the, uh, we've been through the RFQ, Request for Qualifications process. uh, Started what, uh, guys, uh, Chief Campbell, uh, Director of Public Works, Ron Rippinger. Uh, So we've been uh, going through this process. We started it several months back. We received... uh, um, bids, so not bids, but qualifications in. We interviewed uh, KZF uh, is one that this is for criteria architect. If you understand uh, a design build is the method of which the township is going through the process. The state of Ohio has specifically outlined in the Ohio revised code of the processes uh, townships can go through for a building such a project. And we have uh, ha- have chosen design build for many reasons. I won't go down that path. Uh, but in the design build process, the first step of the process is to hire a criteria architect. Uh, so we tonight this will engage a contract to hire the criteria architect. Um, we feel the qualifications uh, have, have been outstanding. KZF has uh, other townships. Uh, Deerfield Township is one of them. There's other townships that have uh, also uh, engaged them. Uh, their work, they seemed very qualified in that aspect of criteria architect. They've had many other projects where they served specifically as criteria architect. Uh, again, uh, this is something that's been new since 2011 and 12 to where this design build and the criteria architect has came along. So there's not a whole lot of um, people that have had such experience as a criteria architect. Uh, KZF is one that has done multiple. Uh, and again, we have personally have interviewed and went out to many different sites and talked to uh, specifically like Deerfield Township as well, who actually uh, had a firehouse done by them and has rehired them again. Uh, and that's always a, a good sign when you're rehired uh, to do their public works facility. Um, so this is a contract very specific. Uh, Frost Brown Todd, uh, our uh, uh, um, counsel on this, has already re- reviewed and approved the contract, mm. as is the language, and went back and forth. Uh, the pricing, there's two steps of this. Um, and the first step of this is the criteria architect, and that is the part where we have to go through with chief, with uh, uh, chief will engage his uh, men to have uh, the input, uh, but then with Ron and myself uh, to go through uh, what are our needs uh, of the facility. And it's a very, uh, take a month or two to even do that. 
um, that part of and, and all the drawings and everything that comes with that uh, it's called concept and design criteria stage and that piece is uh, 46,000 uh, the next phase of this is we realize that internally um, you learn from lessons of the past if you haven't then shame on you uh, but this township has learned from the events of past projects and we have hired them also basically as our project manager they will they will have our back they will not be working for the design build company so the construction company and the actual architect that ends up building this uh, our criteria architect will not be working for them so therefore they will work for us and when a project as far as time delays or product quality or this isn't on the schematic this isn't on the drawing this isn't right they're going to be doing engaging us in all that and plus the uh, closeout stage and construction stage and there's many there's so many regulations that go on with this and they're going to be helping us along with legal counsel as well uh, that phase of that whole thing is twenty, thirty, thirty-five thousand uh, dollars for those parts, and then there's five hundred to seven hundred and fifty, I believe it knows five hundred to seven hundred and fifty dollars in miscellaneous uh, uh, scope uh, of reimbursement for multiple types of you know from mailings and and drawings, paperwork, and stuff like that. So that's the core of this. We have to do this to engage first, that they'll start immediately when we start with the things, they will start developing the things that we need for the next step to do the next, if we go with an RFQ, but the criteria that we're looking for. So when we go back out, somebody can act, actually bid um, bid on that you have to have the exact what you're looking for uh, of course you know when we get to design build you'll have uh, well uh, various uh, vendors uh, bidding on the project and probably you know give us all kinds of ideas of what we can do uh, but we'll have that at that point in time to select so tonight just a criteria architect which is basically our becomes our project manager so to speak uh, knowledgeable project manager of course chief ron and myself will be all over it all the time uh, but you know we look at a wall may not see anything wrong with it and they may look at it and tell us it's ready to fall down so i don't think to that degree but you understand my point so tonight this is approving the first step uh, of this the next step then will be doing all the design so that we can do the next step of basically the bid out process for the actual construction phase any questions I can try to answer <clears throat> or chief or Ron <laughs> is this within the original estimate of what you thought this would cost well, we weren't sure what it was going to cost. We only knew uh, it's below the prices that of the other facilities. So I would say yes, then that okay. would be the case because we were looking at uh, other facilities, which probably were a little bit bigger projects. They were like 120, 130 thousand, and you know we're looking at eighty. Eighty-one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. So. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mr. Seavey? Yes. Resolution passes. We're going to go a little out of order tonight. We're going to move on to citizen comments, which we don't have any. Uh, we're doing this because we have 14 nuisances on the agenda tonight. So we'll do citizen comments. We'll do community announcement events. And then we'll let you guys leave if you want to. Or we're going to finish up with the nuisance resolutions, and then we have a motion for executive session. So, Mr. Luby, why don't you do an announcement of community events? Plan the Pike next step, the June public engagement meetings. Uh, the next one will be Thursday, June 11th, at the community. Uh, there will be a community presentation and open house. It will be from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at the Senior Community Center at 647 Neb Road. The Bailey Fifth Annual Health Fair will be Thursday, June 11th, 2015, at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. It will be located at the Bailey Community Wellness Center at 401 Farrell Court. The Delhi Historical Society Program, Story of Doris Day and Rosemary Clooney, will be Monday, June 8th, 2015, at 7 p.m. 
It will be at the Delhi Park Lodge, 5125 Fuller Road. The Delhi Parks and Recreation Father's Day Fishing Outing in cooperation with On the, on the Way Bait and Tackle will be Sunday, June 21st, 2015. Uh, looks like there's two sessions, one from 8 a.m. to noon and a second from noon to 4 p.m. It will be at the Delhi Park Clearview Lake. Another announcement, the Delhi Parks and Recreation Summer Programs enrollment deadline has been extended to June 12th. Please call the park office at 451-3300 or visit the township's website to learn more about the various camps and, and activities scheduled this year. The Hillside Community Garden is a project of the residents of Delhi Township. 13 terraced garden beds have been planted this season with all kinds of edible goodies from mushrooms to potatoes, edible flowers to strawberries. The community garden is located on Mount St. Joseph University grounds and is sponsored by the Civic Garden Center of Greater Cincinnati. Participation is free and open to, open to the public. See their website for more information. All right, for, for those of you that don't want to stick around for 14 nuisance resolutions, feel free to leave. Our next scheduled meeting is Wednesday, June 24th, 2015. So we'll take a few minutes for everyone to exit and then we'll continue. You know how to clear a room. <laughs> Tony, you're lucky you get to stick around. Right. All right, I think we can get started. Mr. Luby. Resolution 2015-082, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 4362 St. Dominic Drive and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. Uh, we received a complaint of excessive vegetation at this address. Uh, issued informal order with no compliance. It's a vacant property. Um, inspection today, it's still like it is. So we're requesting your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address the violation with our nuisance procedure. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-083, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 4301 Del Ryan Drive and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Yeah. Thank you. I received a, a complaint of this vacant lot, uh, excessive vegetation. We issued an informal order with no compliance. The lot still um, is as it is, so we're requesting that your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address the violation with our nuisance procedure. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mr. Seavey? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-084, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 557 Palmerston Drive and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. Uh, we received a complaint on this vacant property, excessive vegetation. We should order a letter with no compliance. On our inspection today, the violation still persists. So request that your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address that violation with our nuisance procedure. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-085, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 3907 Delhi Pike and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Uh, thank you. We received a complaint on this vacant property of excessive vegetation. We issued an order letter with no compliance upon our inspection this morning. The violation still persists, so we request that your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address this violation with our nuisance procedure. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mr. Seavey? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-086, resolution declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 421 Plum Road and dispensing with the second reading. I move 
the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. We received a complaint of um, household trash at this residence, occupied residence. We issued an informal order with no compliance. We're requesting that your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address this violation with our nuisance procedure. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-087, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 4425 Clover Hill Terrace and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. Um, we received a complaint on this vacant property of excessive vegetation. We should order letters with no compliance. Upon our inspection today, the violation still persists. So we're requesting that your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address this violation. I move to dispense procedure. with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-088, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 4293 Glen Haven Drive and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. We received a complaint on this vacant property of excessive vegetation. We issued an informal order to no compliance. Upon our inspection data violation still persists. So we're requesting your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address this violation with our nuisance procedure. I move to dispense with the second reading. Second the motion is dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-089, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 817 Sun Creek Drive and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. Uh, we recently complained of excessive vegetation at this address issued in formal orders with no compliance. Upon our inspection today, the violation still persists. So we're requesting that your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address the violation with our nuisance procedures. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-090. Resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation and accumulated debris at 753 Lullaby Court and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. I'm proceeding to complain of this occupied property of accumulated debris, excessive vegetation. We should order letters with no compliance. Upon our inspection data, violations are still persist. So we're requesting your board declare this property a nuisance. So we can address these violations with our nuisance procedures. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-091, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation and providing for the removal of junk motor vehicles at 306 Anderson Ferry Road and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. Um, we received a complaint that this occupied property of these inoperable motor, motor, motor vehicles and excessive vegetation. We should order a letter with no compliance. Upon our inspection of the day, the vehicles are still there, vegetation is still there. So we're requesting your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address this violation with our nuisance procedure. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-092, resolution declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 332 Glen Oaks Drive and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. We received a complaint at this occupied property for accumulated debris. We should order a letter with no compliance. Upon our inspection today, the debris is still there. So we're requesting your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address the violation with our nuisance procedure. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-093, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 417 Elm Street and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. Um, we received a complaint that this vacant property of excessive vegetation issued an order letter with no compliance. Upon our inspection of the day, the violation still persists. So we're requesting your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address this violation with our nuisance procedure. 
I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mrs. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-094, resolution declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 354 Greenwell Avenue and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. Receiving complaint of this vacant property of accumulated debris, we should order letter with no compliance. Upon our inspection today, the debris, the, the, debris, the debris is still there. So we're requesting that your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address the violation with our nuisance procedure. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2015-095, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation and accumulated debris at 186 Francis Ridge Drive and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Thank you. I uh, received a complaint uh, at this vacant address of accumulated debris and excessive vegetation. We should order a letter with no compliance. Upon our inspection today, the violation still persists. So we're requesting that your board declare this property a nuisance so we can address these violations with our nuisance procedures. I move to dispense with the second reading. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Resolution passes. There is need for executive session, Mr. Luby. Motion 2015-100 to retire to exec executive session to consider the dismissal, discipline, and demotion of a public employee and the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee. I move motion 2015-0100 to retire to executive session to consider the dismissal, discipline, and demotion of a public employee and the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee. I second the motion to retire to executive session to consider the dismissal, discipline, and demotion of the public employee and the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee. Mr. Luby, please call roll. Mr. Oswald? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Motion passes. And for the few of you left and anyone else watching out there, the next regular scheduled Delhi Township trustee meeting is Wednesday, June 24, 2015. Everyone have a good night.